OB Kwankoso working on a mega alliance and 22 APC senators planning to defect to the People's Democratic Party, says Fanny Kayade. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anacom. The Labour Party presidential candidate Mr. Peter Obi and his new Nigeria People's Party NNPC counterpart Senator Rabiu Musa Kwankoso are still in talks to field a joint ticket for the 2023 presidential poll. Disclosing that the plan is to form a mega alliance, Mr. Julius Aburi, the Labour Party national chairman, said both parties are consulting widely to make the alliance a huge success and, of course, to beat the July 17 deadline by the Independent National Electoral Commission for the uh, substitution of candidates. Tonight, we're being uh, joined by the national chairman of the NCP, who is also the spokesperson of NC Front, Dr. Yunusa Salisu. Tanko. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. Great. Dr. Yunusa, we have been um, inquiring, you know, since we heard about a f um, somewhat of a merger. At, the f at first, it was a rumored merger, and now we're hearing of an alliance of sorts between the NPP, uh, the NNPP, I beg your pardon, and, of course, the Labour Party. Um, now we've seen you know, the talks growing, even though we are not privy to uh, much of the conversations. But, but why does the Labour Party and the NNPP think that this is a great idea? Well, um, thank you very much for having me. Um, the storyline is this. Somewhere last year, a group of intellectuals led by Professor Pat Otomi uh, decided that, look, these uh, 2023 elections, we cannot let it open for all kind of people to come and take over leadership of this country. So we decided to reach out to all the political parties. We reached out to 16 political parties, cascaded it to about five political parties. Then eventually we come down on Labour Party. And in fact, we have barely inform the whole country of us adopting Labour Party as our core political power. Then two days or three days after, a comrade Peter Obi joined us in Labour Party. And that is not to say that discussion has not been going on with the Labour Party right before we announced Labour Party as our adopted party. But then, providence have it that we all join together. Interestingly, the TUC and the NLC also agree to resurrect the Labour Party. Now, we have also been having discussion with engineer Rabi Musa Kokusu as a group for us to work together and give us Nigerians a new political party that will rescue Nigeria from the quagmire that we find ourselves. Now, here is very important I make a clarification. There's a difference between merger and an alliance. A merger means that two political parties or three will lose their identity completely and come with a new political party. Mm -hmm. In the case that happened within all, all, all Nigerian People's Party, ACN, and others that produce APC. But in this case, technically we cannot do merger, but we can align. An alliance simply means working together, but you still maintain your identity. That is an alliance. Collaboration means that you can work together in different sides, and you still maintain your identity. But the most important thing that we've all identified is that we are going to work together. That is the premises in which the discussion is going. But finally... A decision has not been made as a to whether who will become president or who will cause, uh, who will cause the vice. That is left between the two leaders. But in the event that it doesn't happen, everybody can build his own structure and go it alone and see how far we can go. Okay. But the warning here is this. 
Nigerians have accepted these particular two leaders. So any well-grounded political party will not toy with the request of the Nigerian people. Because many people believe that if these two come together, by 12 noon on the day of election, election will have been over. So, but then Nigerians can have a choice because you can you can only take a donkey, a, a horse to or a house to a river, but you cannot force him to drink to drink water. So that is where we are at the moment. Okay. And I'm glad both Peter Obi and Kwasi himself has alluded to the fact that talks are going on. So we still have time within now and August to agree on a position. Then it will be announced to the Nigerians. Okay. But we are working to get Nigeria out of the woods. Thank you very much. Interesting. I, I like that you've given us a very good background. Um, and, and you've pin, pinpointed some of the issues uh, that I want to probe you further on. Um, but then you also seem to not tell us exactly um, what you know might come out of this. You're just saying if nothing happens, then they go different ways. But we also see that one person seems to have um, a very big following of sorts. I'd like to refer to something that the governor of Edo State, uh, Governor Godwin Abasaki, uh, made reference to. Uh, he did talk about the fact that Edo State, um, rather, he said many Nigerians are looking for alternatives. And uh, uh, oh, these are alternatives to the PDP and the APC. And, and, he's, and he made this um, point saying that this might be a problem going into 2023. And then he said that um, there's a reason why the APC also lost in uh, the, sorry, the PDP lost in Ekiti uh, during the elections. Um, he talks about, you know, that the supporters of the Labour candidate, uh, Labour Party candidate, are, are many. So in terms of the talks that are being had, I'm asking, um, who's going to collapse into who? Um, again, if you're having a coalition or an alliance, there has to be a support of sorts that would make one person win. Since you're saying that you might not necessarily collapse parties into one another, but then you're going to support from where you are, how workable is this? Because again, we, we see that the Southeasterners are saying, we do not want to play second fiddle. Hence why we have a Peter Obi holding the flag of the Labour Party. But then we also have a Kwon Kwaso, on the other hand, who left the PDP to the NNPP, saying that he wants to be the president. So these are two strong persons. How much talk can let one person step down for the other or say, well, you go first and then I come later? Technically, there is a way in which there is a room for a substitution. When, if they agree on power sharing, shifting ground and moving to one political party will not be a problem. As long as there's an agreement, the most important thing, let them agree, then you look at the legal framework and find out which way is the best way for you to achieve your collaboration. It's simple. So we need to wait for anybody to agree first. The most important thing here is that there is a room for that to be actualized if they agree. Uh -huh. And then the truth is it, when you said that probably um, how uh, people are working, or what would they do and how would they do, all of these things are doable once you agree on a position. And then you can easily find a way when you look at the technicalities and the lawyers go through so that you will not run foul of the provision of the Electoral Act and then the constitution of the parties. This is very important. All right. Let's talk about um, the viability of all the, the both political parties. We know that the Labour Party does have some structure. We know that the NMP, NMPB does have some structure. Uh, but then... Um, we're also looking at the National Assembly here because it's not just um, rooting for, you know, the presidential ticket or the presidential seat. Uh, what happens to other seats that the PDP or the APC holds? Um, because these are questions, legit, legitimate questions that have been raised. If um, 
you are pushing for the presidency, then you should be pushing for other seats. And we've seen the just concluded elections in a kitty state where the incumbent, um, uh, the ruling party, emerged winner, even though there are certain controversies surrounding that election. Um, what plans does this alliance of sorts, if it ever come to be, have um, in terms of winning other seats other than the presidency? Okay, as we stand today, every political party is mobilizing to ensure that they fill all the position to run for election. And the uplinking of the candidate for presidency, Senate and Federal House of Representatives just con was just concluded. Now, the next step is for State Assembly and Governors, which will start on the 4th of July and terminate on the 17th of July. What is happening now is that every political party is working very hard to get credible candidates. Now, if this alliance worked out, all of them work together as a team. So you can, ha you can be sure that almost all the political party will fill all the position. And so there's no problem with that. The most important thing is, is for us to agree to work together. And in the case that it doesn't happen, we all have a candidate in all of the position open for contest. For contest. So that is the way it will happen. And it will always work out once there's an agreement. Okay. Let's talk about um, the, the visit of um, Governor Peter Albi uh, to um, River State. Um, we saw him in talks with the River State Governor. We also saw him in talks with the Bochi State Governor, uh, Bala Mohammed, who is also a PDP governor. Uh, and these, these, these are members of the op major opposition in the country. This has gotten a lot of people talking uh, as to if the Labour Party and its presidential candidate is trying to steer us in the direction of a new Nigeria, uh, what's he doing with a Governor Wiki or a Governor Bala Mohammed? And what is the idea behind those talks? Well, you see, in politics, there is no enemy but, but permanent interest. You can always even discuss with your enemy in politics because you may end up being friends in future. So what is happening here is that you are reaching out to your colleagues. Telling your, telling your ideas to them. And if they buy it, they may come on supporting you. That is how it is done in everywhere in the world. It's not a war. It's about convincing each other on a superior argument. And don't forget, these people have worked together before at a point in time. So reaching out to each other is very important. So that at the end of it, when you form a government, you will still need everybody to make your government work. So discussing and reaching out is part of the principles and functions that are enshrined in, politi in politics. So it's good for us to reach out to everybody so that we can be on the same page. In the spirit of reaching out, let's talk about um, the, uh, ex the voters' registration, the continuous voter registration. Now, um, many have pushed and called for INEC to extend the voter education, um, seeing the eagerness of certain Nigerians to want to be part of the political process come 2023. Um, also, your party member, Mr. Bure, had also appealed to INEC um, to see if they could move and extend the date. Other than talking about voter education, I ask every political party representative this question. What are you doing to not just um, ask people to get their PVCs, but what are you doing in terms of voter education as to what to be, they should expect during the elections, or who sh they should vote for, why they should vote for that person, and you know, making sure that their votes count? Because um, I have spoken to INEC about their voter education responsibility, but they also have said political parties have the onus of making that also happen, drumming it in the, into the ears of the voters. But then there's a caveat. They have said, and many, many pundits have also in, um, said, that the reason why political parties do not engage in these voter education is because um, 
because of the corruption that is within the process in itself come election day. But I'd like for you to tell me uh, if your party would be steering away from this norm. In terms of mobilization and uh, calling Nigerians to come out and register, we have been doing that in a continuous basis uh, in collaboration with what I need to have put in place so that we can encourage people to come out and register. And they are responding. I saw the what happened in Abuja and in Lagos. Uh, it's very encouraging. For us in the Labour Party, what we are trying to do is to make sure that we open up all the offices that we, we have in all the world so that this issue of uh, not having structure will be a thing of the past. But I can assure you the structures are there. And uh, Peter Obi has alluded to the fact that the majority of Nigerians who are hungry, over 100 million of them, are in structures. But for physical, physical office, we are trying to open up all offices in all the world so that people can go there and register as member of the Labour Party. This should be concluded within the next few weeks by the grace of God so people can join us from the world level. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to come back to um, the politics within the party and the two persons who are engaging in this talks. I spoke to Professor Pato Toby a few weeks ago on the Labour Party and the alliances that might come in the future. And um, he did say that there would be a lot more alliances. At, the, at first, I remember that there was a publication that um, had said that the NNPP was going to go into some collaboration with uh, the Labour Party, which was refuted by the NNPP. But now we're seeing that conversation come to light. Again, let's look at the notoriety of these men and how much spread they have. We know that Ekwankwa So has a Kwankwa Sia movement, uh, which is mostly in Kano and some other, you know, other parts. Um, we also see a Peter Albi with a spread in the southeast and maybe some love in the middle belt and the south south. We do not know much about the southwest. Um, and uh, if he were to have a Kwankwaso on board or these two were to work together, how do they capture other parts of the country, especially the southwest and even, even the, some parts of the north that the Kwankwasia movement might not have a grip over? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, there are political parties already waiting in the wind to join this movement. And I also know for the fact, which everybody has alluded to the fact that they, these people are talking to each other. So they also recognize the importance of working together. And uh, we also know that we, the Labour Party has an inroad in the southwest, because of the large number of the Nigerian youth who are supporting Peter Obi's movement, and also in the southwest, I mean the southeast, and the south-south, north central, northwest and northeast, everywhere we have the Nigerian youth supporting this particular movement. When you, when you so we just only need to add sorry, strength to strength. Sir, when you say so that everywhere, we can is that not a bit presumptuous? When you say everywhere, youth everywhere. Don't forget we also have a PDP with a Governor Okoa as a running mate, which also covers some part of the southeast and the south-south. So when you say you have Nigerian youth everywhere, is that not a bit presumptuous on your part? No, not at all. I am making a confirmation now to what the Edo State Governor said. He said, do you notice that there's a, there's a new trend in the horizon now? That almost every household has somebody called the obedience. I didn't say it. That was coming from a PDP Governor from the South-South. That to tell you that we are reaching out to everywhere in this country. The other day, it was a full girl telling her mother that her new name now is Obedient. This happened in Sokoto, in Gombe. Somebody just opened an office on behalf of the Labour Party and printed it by himself. In the North Central, a woman just opened an office by herself and printed the Labour Party. So you see, 
What we are having in our hands is a tsunami. So everybody who wants to win government should just come on board. Let us continue to get this country back to the people. So it's not an assumption. All right, let, let's, let's look at uh, other issues. Now, um, just as you said, um, there are young people all across, in your words, everywhere, who seem to be, um, you know, joining the, the OB train. But do you have concerns about the fact that, you know, these waves can be momentary? They might just ride onto a certain point and then die off. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm only asking, because many have even try to compare this movement to the NSAS movement and they're saying that what's the guarantee that these same young people who are on social media who seem to be canvassing for uh, a certain Peter Albi will show up on the election day to give you the votes that you require to get that seat. Well, interestingly, when you mentioned the NSAS movement, the anger that is still born in, in the hearts of the Nigerian youth is actually translated into the obedient movement. But this time around, it is not in a violent form. But rather, they want to use their PVC to take back their country for somebody they believe in. So this movement is working stronger. Immediately when we finish addressing the structures, you will be able to see the large number of people that will be moving in. So it's not an it's not a new thing. Maybe you think that maybe the temp the temple will slow down. No, 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 no. I think the the temple is going to work more stronger. In fact, to tell you, there are Nigerians both locally and internationally donating money, donating money just to support this particular movement. So that is to tell you the level of commitment shown and by the people. Okay. Well, Dr. Tanko Yunusa is, of course, uh, of the... Um I'm so sorry, he is of the NC front and is also speaking as a national chairman of the NCP. We appreciate your thoughts and uh, we wish you the best of luck as you continue your talks. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we will take a short break. When we return, we will discuss the planned defections after uh, the PDP and APC primaries. Stay with us.